What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today, um, so we're gonna go through here and I'm gonna kinda get you guys, I know I've got a lot of comments about, hey, where I'm at with the swap. Sorry, I haven't been able to get the uploads up consistently as I wanted. Uh, so I'll kinda go through kinda where I'm at with the swap and what I'm planning on doing today. So some good stuff in store, stick around. All right, so guys, so where I left this off last time, um, so I did get, uh, I'm not, hell, I'm not even sure where I got off. Um, so uh, working on wiring. That's the original harness coming through. Got to get it all connected. Uh, I've got the Volvo pump um, mounted. I've got the breaker down here. Got my wiring for it. Got the wiring harness hooked to it. Actually, I've got my GPS controller that will hook to here for the CAN bus signal. Um, so I've got to get that ran. Uh, so really focusing on wiring, which is not my strong suit, but so I really have to take my time. Um, I've got the uh, AC system installed. Um, got all that done here. Also, um, I've got a power steering cooler. I've got one line left to make for the high pressure lines. Um, I originally had the wrong uh, master cylinder, uh, so I had to order another one. So I'll put that on there and get the Maximum Motorsports um, brake line, a uh, little adapter kit in there. I still got to put the fitting on this high pressure line. So all that's kind of done. Um, of course, I've got the radiator installed, condenser installed, I've got the lines hooked up. Actually, the since, guys, if you've been watching, you kind of knew I wanted to do this to where it was kind of a, what we call it a stock looking install. I didn't want it completely custom. That's why I even went with the stock panels without um, any holes in them, of course. There's my brake reservoir. Well, not really what reservoir, just more of a check and uh, to be able to fill. Um, so putting the battery over here caused some struggles. Uh, of course, one, if you'll look with your AC line kit here coming through here and all down here, things get pretty, pretty tight right here. Um, so I went and picked up like a universal battery tray kit at like AutoZone. Uh, and then basically all I was able to use out of it was the J bolts, the tray, and then I had to put me some um, little stops down here at the bottom. And then I had to make this aluminum bracket right here, which worked out pretty good. I mean, the things, I mean, it's in there. Um, so that's going to work good. Um, so I like this. This turned out pretty good. Uh, you notice that I had to go with a skinny battery because a normal battery will not fit in this space. But, so guys, if you've been watching the channel long enough, you know that I went with the DIY Auto-Tune. Our folks over at Digital Dash EFI, DIY Auto Tune, they have a plug and play Coyote harness for these cars. And I'm gonna tell you, the quality of this harness is amazing. So, and, and this has got a rear exit harness, so I've got it coming through here and then going into the firewall. This is where, the, now we've changed what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you kind of why, and you do have multiple options of what you can do, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do today and where I'm gonna end up mounting the ECU. This so guy's going back into the wiring, so I'd actually, so here's, here's gonna be the hot lead coming off the battery. Um, and I think this is my lead that's gonna go over to run the power on the other side that we can run power steering and all that off here. This is actually my hot lead going inside the car, which we're going to have to change because I've got it going in here. And then I'll show you what we got inside and kind of what I'm, why I'm deciding to change up what I was gonna do. Lord, look at the inside of this car. All right, so one cool thing that DIY Auto Tune does is you see the harness coming through here. Look, <laughs> this is how much harness you got, guys. That's a lot of harness. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. So originally, originally, I was going to mount the ECU under the seat. Now, you guys know I'm putting S550 seats in here which is also gonna require me to channel this out a little bit to mount the seat down. Now, of course, if I was to mount the ECU back here, let's just take a look at that and I'll show you why I've decided what I'm gonna do. Well, if we were to mount the ECU under here, and of course you got your harness here, right? Can y'all see where the problem might be, especially with an S550 seat? Now, yeah, these are gonna go down a lot further. But really what the problem is going to be is once that seat is channeled and it's sitting down further, there's no way this harness is going to clear the underside of the seat. So of course, 
kind of flip to option two. If we were to go in here and kind of go in the factory area, your problem there is, is once all this stuff's plugged up, well, what's got to go right here? Well, your, your, um, your squirrel cage, your blower has to go right here. And that takes up most of that space. Now there's a little space behind it that this would all have to be, this would all have to kind of be coiled up behind it. But again, by the time you get all this stuff plugged up, now the thing is, all of this harness, some of this stuff has to go back out to the car. So you can imagine the mess of, of, of trying to tidy all that up and behind that blower and getting it all crammed into here. It'll work, but man, I'm just not sure if I wanna fight all that. So guys, just to simplify the whole wiring process, I'm gonna mount it right here. This is where it's gonna get mounted. The only thing I'm not crazy about that is, of course I put these nice finished panels in here and you're gonna see, you know, the bolts or whatever I end up, so I may just put uh, threaded inserts back here to screw it into. I mean, you'll kind of see it. I mean, the battery kind of covers some of it, but you know, you just hate to kind of put a hole into something that you didn't have a, you replaced to not have holes, but hey, it is what it is. Will it fit through here? Um, hopefully it'll fit through here and be able to snake that thing. You know, because otherwise then I got to think of something else. Alright guys, so we've been working on trying to get all the wiring done, make everything nice and neat. And like I was saying before, really trying to make this look like the car was, you know, if it came from the factory with the Coyote. So I'm not trying to hide everything, but I am trying to make everything look nice and neat. So I've got the fuse box that's for the ECU right here tucked behind the battery. Um, we've got our relay. So this is actually our main power coming in to our really, I still gotta run the trigger and the ground to this relay. Then our main power going into the fuse box. And of course here, we've got all these going and is what is powering the ECU. Um, of course, I still have to run some of these connections. Then once I get all this kind of tucked up, then I'm gonna run both these in here. We'll seal that up. And everything's kind of coming together now, guys. One thing that we've gotta do after doing all that, we've got to get this wiring over here tidied up. I'm just going to use the factory wire. We got our light harness um, attached to this. Um, get our solenoid attached to this for the starter. Um, and then also we've got our wiring over here for our pump. And I've got one more line to make, which goes right here. And then we've got to get the GPS, um, the GPS controller, CAN bus controller attached to here. And really there's, there's not a lot more wiring to do. I've got the got our breaker down here for for your uh, for the it's an 80 amp breaker for this. This actually has a relay built in so when it gets a power trigger signal from the CAN bus, uh, well the wire and then the CAN bus signal will trigger this on instead of putting a relay on this. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, one thing I'll tell you about when you're gonna jump in and do a Coyote swap is if you're like me, you've got a really good idea when it comes to what's required mechanically. And I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on all of that. And that stuff's all pretty straightforward. But when you go into doing um, the electrical side of things, well, that's not my strong suit. And that's what's taken a lot more time for me to kind of figure out. Plus I'm a little bit anal about every, how everything is ran. I want everything to be neat. And 
the biggest advice I could give to you when it comes to doing electrical is you really got to plan things out. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and just put it down on paper about what, how many different connection points are you going to need, how many terminations you're going to need. And when you start wiring all that, you kind of got a, a kind of a diagram because you don't want to go back and redo stuff. So that's the biggest advice I could give is really plan out your electrical. And especially if you're like me and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm figuring it out as I go. Um, but hey, I know if I can do it, you guys can do it. So stick around, stay around for the next one. I will try to have video back out next week because I'm actually off work this week, which will make things a little bit nicer, be able to get things done out here. And I'll get you updated on where we're at with this next week. See you then.